The U.S. military just made a historic move. They've officially adopted a brand new combat caliber for infantry squads. After 2001, numerous stories started to trickle out of Afghanistan of enemy snipers requiring multiple hits from the 5.56mm. A harder hitting cartridge was needed, and so the Army went to work. In a significant shift from decades of standardization, the U.S. Army's officially adopted the 6.8x51mm cartridge, branded as the 277 Fury, as part of its next generation squad weapon program. The goal of this change is to make U.S. soldiers more effective in combat, particularly against modern threats. But what do we know about this chambering? Let's take a closer look. The journey towards the 65 by 51 millimeter began in the early 2000s, following reports from Afghanistan indicating that enemy combatants could withstand multiple hits from the standard 556 by 45 millimeter NATO rounds. Body armor has come a long way since the widespread use of flak jackets throughout the Vietnam War. It's grown so affordable that it's found its way into the hands of men across the globe. The problem is that 5.56 ammunition only has an effective lethal range of roughly 300 meters. If the enemy is beyond that distance and wearing body armor to boot, you can have a rifle that can't neutralize the threat in time. Recognizing the need for a more potent cartridge, the Army collaborated with Remington in 2002 to develop a stronger round. The result was the 6.8x43mm SPC, which, while an improvement, still had limitations in range and lethality. By 2004, the Army had recognized the potential of the 6.8mm SPC and introduced it into their arsenal with the M468 rifle. However, advancements in enemy armor and battlefield tactics necessitated further development. This led to the creation of the 6.8x51mm cartridge designed to offer superior performance in terms of range, accuracy, and lethality. At first glance, the 6.8x51mm looks similar to the older 762 NATO. In fact, it shares the same case length and diameter as the 308 Winchester, a popular civilian hunting round. But the similarities end there. The 277 Fury is a hybrid three-piece cartridge. It combines a steel case head with a brass body joined by an aluminum locking washer. This design allows it to withstand chamber pressures of up to 80,000 PSI, far higher than traditional brass casings can handle. For comparison, the 556 NATO operates around 55,000 PSI. This higher pressure translates directly into performance. Depending on the load, the 6.8x51mm can push a 135 grain bullet at speeds of 3,000 feet per second, delivering more than 2,600 foot pounds of energy. That's nearly double the energy of a standard 556 round. In practical terms, it means soldiers can engage targets effectively at 600 meters and beyond with enough retained energy to matter, even against armored opponents. While the Army won't say whether the new cartridge can penetrate body armor at that distance, the silence suggests yes. The new ammunition is also lighter than a traditional 100% brass casing and can handle higher pressures than traditional casings. There's not just going to be any one type of 6.8mm ammunition that the Army is going to be using here either. According to the Army, there will be multiple types of tactical and training rounds that increase accuracy and are more lethal against emerging threats than both the 5.56mm and the 7.62mm ammunition. Those types of tactical rounds haven't been specified, but it's likely to contain the standard battery of incendiary, green tips, tracers, and various powder and bullet combinations. The superior ballistic performance of the 6.8x51mm with its high-pressure design and enhanced lethality set the stage for the U.S. Army's next-generation squad weapon. This initiative aimed to leverage the cartridge's capabilities to replace aging systems like the M4 carbine and M249 squad automatic weapon with advanced modular firearms tailored for modern warfare. Central to the NGSW program is the XM7 rifle developed by Sig Sauer. Based on the company's MCX Spear platform, the XM7 is chambered in 6.8x51mm and incorporates several enhancements over the M4 carbine. These include a free-floating M-Lock handguard, ambidextrous controls, and a suppressor-compatible design. The rifle's design emphasizes modularity, allowing for quick barrel changes and adaptability to various mission requirements. The XM7 is paired with the XM157 fire control system, which integrates a digital optic with ballistic computation, 
target tracking, and environmental sensors. The system provides soldiers with real-time data, improving target acquisition and engagement under diverse conditions. Complementing the XM7 is the XM250 light machine gun, also developed by Sig Sauer. This belt-fed, gas-operated weapon is designed to replace the M249 squad automatic weapon, weighing approximately 13 pounds. The XM250 is lighter than its predecessor and features a recoil mitigation system to enhance control during sustained fire. The XM250 is optimized for the 6.8 by 51 mm cartridge, offering an effective range of up to 762 meters. Its design includes a collapsible stock, ambidextrous controls, and a suppressor-compatible barrel, making it versatile for various combat scenarios. The weapon is capable of firing at rates up to 800 rounds per minute, providing squads with increased firepower and flexibility. Additionally, conversion kits for existing weapons such as the M240B and M240L machine guns are being developed to allow for a gradual transition without the immediate need to replace all legacy systems. This approach balances modernization with cost-effectiveness, ensuring that units can continue to operate effectively during the transition period. The result of all these changes is that you end up with a weapon such as the XM250, which is 40% lighter than the M249 lightweight machine gun, has reduced recoil, improved accuracy, and has double the effective range of fire. One of the first questions squad leaders and platoon sergeants will ask is, what does this actually do to the way we fight? The short answer is more options, a few new trade-offs, and a lot of small changes that add up. The 6.8 by 51 mm gives individual shooters more effective range and energy on target than the old 5.56 loadout. That means squads can engage threats at longer distances with greater confidence, reducing the need to immediately call for suppressive fires from heavier platforms or rely on indirect fires in many scenarios. Early Army reports and fielding notes show units are already testing those extended engagement tactics as they receive XM7s and XM250s. With reliable hits farther out, teams can push observation points and remote overwatch a little farther from the objective. That lets a second element suppress or fix the enemy while assault elements close. The same basic tactics used with the M4 but done at stretched distances. Leaders will update standoff distances, engagement protocols, and bounding techniques in unit SOPs as live fire results and after-action reviews come in. The XM157 fire control optic that comes with the NGSW package is supposed to help soldiers make those longer shots count by offering range finding, ballistic calculations, and environmental sensing built into the site. At the same time, soldier feedback during testing is flagged, usability problems with that optic, so the Army's iterating on software and user interface while fielding weapons. In short, the capability is powerful, but its real-world value depends on reliability and ergonomics. The new weapons were designed with suppressor use and signature management in mind, something that matters more when units operate inside populated areas or near sensors. Suppressors reduce flash and lessen the weapon's auditory thermal footprint, which helps survivability during maneuver. There are still logistics and maintenance considerations, suppressor cleaning, changes to barrel heating, etc. But the design intent is clear, make the squad both more lethal and harder to find. One perennial concern is interoperability. The U.S. moving to a unique cartridge creates short-term friction with allies who still use 5.56 or 7.62, but the Army's approach, fielding conversion kits, reduced range training rounds, and phased procurement eases the transition and buys time for coalition partners to evaluate the round. If allied nations choose to adopt similar calibers, the long-term logistical and production economies improve. For now, the Army is prioritizing units that most need the capability, close combat forces and certain Pacific-facing units, while watching how allies respond. The Army is deliberately fielding the XM7 and XM250 to selected units, collecting soldier feedback, and iterating on optics, ammo types, and accessories. That's how teething problems from pouch fit to optic software get fixed before a wider rollout. If the new system proves reliable under extended operational conditions, it will reshape small unit tactics for decades. If it has persistent reliability or supply issues, the Army has planned incremental steps so the force can adapt without being left vulnerable. One of the most immediate challenges is cost. 
The hybrid case design, steel head, brass body, and aluminum locking washer adds complexity to the manufacturing process. While it doesn't require entirely new machinery, it does require additional steps compared to traditional brass casings. That means each round is more expensive to produce. For perspective, the 5.56mm NATO round is one of the cheapest military cartridges in the world thanks to decades of mass production and global standardization. The 6.8x51mm, by, by contrast, is still in its infancy. Until production scales up, the Army will be paying a premium. This raises questions about how quickly the new round can be fielded across the entire force. It's likely that frontline units will receive it first, while support and reserve units continue to rely on 5.56mm and 7.62mm for years to come. Switching calibers also means retraining soldiers. The XM5 and XM250 handle differently than the M4 and M249. The recoil is stronger, the ballistics are different, and the optics are more advanced. Soldiers will need time to adjust to these changes, and training programs will need to be updated accordingly. The Army's betting that the benefits, greater range, improved accuracy, and better armor penetration will outweigh the learning curve, but in the short term, there will be a period of adjustment as troops get used to their new weapons. Conversion kits for older rifles and machine guns may help smooth the transition by allowing existing platforms like the M240 to be adapted to the new round, the Army can avoid scrapping huge stockpiles of weapons. This also provides a backup option if production of the new rifles and machine guns lags behind demand. Despite these challenges, the adoption of the 6.8x51mm is a historic step. It signals that the Army is preparing for a future where infantry squads face opponents with advanced armor, long-range weapons, and sophisticated tactics. It also shows a willingness to invest in cutting-edge technology from hybrid ammunition to smart optics. For the defense industry, this shift could spark a wave of innovation. Civilian shooters may eventually see commercial versions of the 277 Fury become more common, and allied militaries may follow the U.S. lead in adopting similar calibers. Most importantly for the soldiers on the ground, the new cartridge and weapons promise a decisive edge. In combat, that edge can mean the difference between success and failure, survival and loss. What do you think? Will the 6.8x51mm become the standard that finally replaces decades of 5.56mm dominance, or will it be another step in an ongoing evolution of small arms? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments, and don't forget to follow for more updates on the Army's latest gear and battlefield innovations.